Good evening. Welcome to you all. I'm Gillian Davies, the incumbent priest of Salt Spring Anglican Parish. And in these strange times, it is still our pleasure and delight to gather for the tradition of the service of lessons and carols. This year, we chose to do not Advent, but Christmas lessons and carols, so we could listen to the stories of our journey as the people of God from ancient times, leading to the manger in Bethlehem. We especially invite you to join us in singing these beautiful and beloved carols. May this service bring you joy and peace as we wait to welcome Emmanuel, God among us, born this night 2,000 plus years ago. And may your Christmas Eve be blessed with the light and hope of our Messiah, Jesus the Christ.
Dear people of God, in the season of Advent and Christmas, it is our responsibility and joy to prepare ourselves to hear once more the message of the angels, to go to Bethlehem and see the Son of God lying in a manger. Let us hear and heed in Holy Scripture the story of God's loving purpose from the time of our rebellion against God until the glorious redemption brought to us by this holy child Jesus. And let us look forward to the yearly remembrance of his birth with hymns and songs of praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of God's whole world, for peace and justice on earth, for the unity and mission of the church for which Christ died, and especially for his church in our country and on this island of Salt Spring. And because he particularly loves them, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and unloved, the aged and little children, as well as all those who do not know and love the Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, let us remember before God Christ's blessed and courageous mother and that whole multitude which no one can number whose hope was in the word made flesh and with whom in Jesus we are one forevermore. And now, to sum up all these petitions, let us join together in praying the words which Christ himself has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. To the people living in darkness, God will send a great light. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you, and wealth of the nations shall come to you. Here ends the reading.
Meditation from Richard Rohr. Advent, from the Latin for a coming, an approach, or an arrival. Advent is upon us. This season is more than a sentimental, reminiscent waiting for a new baby Jesus. The need for adult Christianity and Jesus actual message is so urgent that we cannot allow the great feast of Christmas and its preparation in Advent to be watered down in any way. The suffering, injustice, and devastation on this planet are too great to settle for an infantile gospel or Jesus. Jesus taught that the reign of God, or the kingdom of God, asks a great deal of us personally. Surrender, simplicity, solidarity without suffering. Advent is a time to focus our anticipation on the eternal and cosmic Christ, beyond and before the child in the manger. Jesus is the microcosmic expression of the macrocosm, the union of human and divine, psychic and physical, in a single life and person. The Christ includes and goes further than Jesus, beyond space and time. Jesus is the concrete and personal embodiment of universal love. Christ is the blueprint and icon of God's loving presence and plan, always and everywhere. It is to this adult and cosmic Christ that we say, Come, Lord Jesus. Here ends the reading. To God's people in exile, in a faraway land, the prophet Isaiah announces good news. God is returning and bringing the exiles home. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades but the word of our God will stand forever. Here ends the reading. It can't.
triumphant king comes as a humble and peaceful monarch. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, yet humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be cut off. And he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. So ends the reading. If we had been there by Martin Luther, there are some of us who think to ourselves, if I had only been there, how quick I would have been to help the baby. I would have washed his linen. How happy I would have been to go with the shepherds to see the Lord lying in the manger. Yes, we would. We say that because we know how great Christ is. But if we had been there at that time, we would have done no better than the people of Bethlehem. Why don't we do it now? We have Christ in our neighbor. Here ends the reading. Thank you. 
True Motherhood by Julian of Norwich. God chose to be our mother in all things, and so made the foundation of his work most humbly and most pure in the virgin's womb. God, the perfect wisdom of all, arrayed himself in this humble place. Christ came in our poor flesh to share a mother's care. Our mothers bear us for pain and for death. Our true mother, Jesus, bears us for joy and endless life. Christ carried us within him in love and travail until the full time of his passion. And when all was complete and he had carried us so for joy, still all this could not satisfy the power of his wonderful love. All that we owe is redeemed in truly loving God. For the love of Christ works in us. Christ is the one whom we love. Here ends the reading. Gabriel announces to the Virgin Mary that she will give birth to a ruler whose reign shall never end. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. 
but she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Here ends the reading. Jesus is born in Bethlehem and is worshipped by angels and shepherds. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Messiah, the Lord. 
and this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those who he finds favor. Here ends the reading. Theotokos, a poem from the O Antiphons by Malcolm Geit. O come, O come and be our God with us, O long-sought witness for a world without. O secret seed, O hidden spring of light. Come to us, wisdom, come, unspoken name, Come, root and key and king and holy flame, O quickened little wick so tightly curled, Be folded with us into time and place. Unfold for us the mystery of grace, And make a womb of all this wounded world. O heart of heaven beating in the earth, O tiny hope within our hopelessness, Come to be born, to bear us to our birth, to touch a dying world with new-made hands and make these rags of time our swaddling bands. Here ends the reading. To a people living in a time of darkness comes new light, Christ the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him 
not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Here ends the reading. of the running wave to you, deep peace of the flowing air to you, deep peace of the quiet earth to you, deep peace of the shining stars to you, deep peace of the Prince of Peace to you. And may the blessing of God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always.
is called.